so a lot's been happening in the backyard. <laughs> I mean, astrophotography wise. Yeah, I've made two, well, two major purchases and they've been completely reactionary. So I was sitting at home uh, one Saturday scrolling on High Point Scientific's website, you know, to check out the out of stock items. That's what I like to do. And all of a sudden, there were these two words that I haven't seen together in like forever. In stock. Yes. So I reacted and I bought it. So yeah, it's the Ioptrons version of the Richie Crichin, Creechin, Creature, Richie Creature, Crichin, Creechin, the RC 8 inch astrograph uh, at 1635 millimeters. Anyway, it's a really great scope. I have been extremely impressed with the culmination out of the box. Oh, and speaking of out of the box, don't expect an unboxing because you want to know what was in the box? That, that was in the box. That was it, no instructions. Oh, it does come with the three spacing rings and a focuser and that's it. No pamphlets, no stickers, no nothing. Way to go Ioptron. But guess what, it was under $1,000, so I'm not complaining. And out of the box, extremely well collimated. So I did pick up the, the Howie Glider laser collimator, a 0.7 focal reducer, and the collimation ring but guess what? After putting the Howie Glider collimator in and shooting a laser beam uh, back and through to where I could see how the laser was hitting the center spot on the secondary mirror, it was spot on. So guess what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Because I got a story in my next video to tell you about that. Anyway, uh, to get to the focus point here with the ASI 1600, I had to uh, definitely use all three rings. One, two, three. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to have to eliminate that one when I actually put the collimation ring on it. And what else? The focuser. Not sure if you can see how the EAF was mounted on, but I actually had to use the tension screw and I had to apply, find a screw with just enough tension or just enough length to make sure that I was compressing the focuser and still holding on the bracket. It was... Uh, a little bit of an ordeal but I figured it out and that's pretty much the only way I could get this uh, the EAF mounted onto the focuser so uh, it's a super quick video because there's really not a lot to say about it you know maybe when I get into collimation I might uh, do another video on how that process goes if it ever goes out but guess what handling this thing in and out of the house uh, I cradle it pretty good and I'm pretty gentle with it and the stars are still spot on uh, one thing you need to know that I wasn't aware of if you're shooting at shorter focal lengths like 300 millimeters, 400 millimeters, and you're auto focusing, you're gonna, hey Frankie, you're gonna notice that your, um, your HFR is gonna be pretty low, like you're gonna be looking at 2.5 to 3. Uh, but with the oversampling that I'm experiencing matching the 1600 and its smaller pixels up with this uh, narrow field of view, the HFR increases, so you know focus for me is anywhere from 4.6 to 5, uh, especially like a narrow band. That's definitely uh, something that uh, was new for me to experience. 
So I've got one more clear night tonight, Friday night, the uh, 11th, 12th of June, somewhere in there. It's hot as blazes. Uh, and please don't look at my grass. We barely had any rain. And then it rained all of a sudden and it went poof, like that. <laughs> uh, that means you, Mark. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna probably get a little more time on, what am I working on now? NGC 4725, a pretty cool looking barred spiral galaxy. And trying to finish up this pillars of creation, microscopic, <laughs> zoomed in Eagle Nebula project that I'm working on in uh, SHO or the Hubble palette. So until we meet again, until I reveal, wait, reveal what this is down here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, clear skies and clear minds. <laughs>